How does internet advertising work? Welcome to Tea at Taxevity, where you get insights from people who make life better, our many clients and friends. I'm Pramod Sharma, the actuary at the Taxevity Insurance Advisory, and when I'm not doing interviews, I'm helping people with their life and health insurance. Our guest today is Albert Luke. Welcome, Albert. Great being here. Albert, when you're not being interviewed, what do you do? I'm a vice president of legal and strategy for a company called Jumbleberry Interactive Group. Uh, Jumbleberry is a digital advertising agency. So uh, uh, for better or for worse, we're the people responsible for the uh, ads you see when you surf the internet. I don't know if I should say congratulations <laughs> <laughs> or what, but yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at a topic that I certainly didn't know very much about, and that's how internet advertising works. Uh, before we started recording, you were saying that there are different parties involved. You've got the advertisers and we've got the publishers, and that makes sense, yes. but there's also a group in between. Yes, so let, let, let's start from the beginning. There's, there's So in a pure sense, we have companies, which in the advertising industry is called advertisers. Mm -hmm. So think of the GMs and the Apples and you know the, the Amazons in the world. They have some product or service they want to sell. Mm -hmm. So on the other side of this is publishers. So publishers are basically websites, right? Okay. Most websites these days that you visit will have some type of ad space. So they run, run a banner on the top. They'll have a large rectangle on the side. They may have something on the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So that's all ad space, right? So um, I know no one ever thinks about this, but how does an advertiser actually get an ad onto your blog, for example, if your blog had, had, had advertising or to a personal finance blog or to ESPN.com, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So what typically happens is you have to remember the advertisers in the business of making a good or service and, and creating an ad. Uh, not particularly in the service of going to literally millions of websites and basically saying, I built a new car, you know, I have an ad about the new car. Do you actually want to run it? That's just, mm -hmm. it's just massively time consuming. That's not what businesses do. So what's happened is there's been grown an ecosystem of intermediaries in the middle. So we're one of the intermediaries. So um, in the simplest sense, you can think of us as a, as, as a distributor. So on one side, our inventory, so to speak, are mm -hmm. the ads that the advertisers want people to see. And on the other side, so again, to use the distribution analogy, think of it as um, the retailers. They're the people who have uh, shelf space in this, in, in, in this case, um, uh, uh, ad space on their websites that, mm -hmm. that they need inventory to fill, okay? right? So we connect the two. So we'll basically say to advertisers, we do a lot of health and beauty. So we'll say to advertisers, we're specialists in health and beauty. We have, uh, again, to use the analogy of distribution, we have a lot of retailers that sell health and beauty. In, 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 in internet terms, we have a lot of you know, uh, websites that, uh, that deal with uh, health and beauty or have health and beauty related themes so that when people look for health and beauty, they'll, they'll find these particular types of ads and we basically connect the two. Okay, so if I've got a health and beauty ad, then I would go to your network rather than perhaps another one which might be focused on uh, yes cars. so <laughs> it's 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 the the jargon is known as verticals Vertical. so every network has a has i mean some networks have multiple verticals and they're all things to all people other networks like ours tend to specialize in certain verticals so um uh, insurance or personal financial services is, is one particular vertical which a lot of networks deal with, right? So if you're a large insurance company, you want to sell auto insurance, you want to sell home insurance, you want to sell disability insurance, uh, you know, you would go to that network because it's plugged into a lot of websites that deal with personal finance, right? So someone visiting those websites may be more inclined to visit those ads. Uh, in our case, we specialize in health and beauty, right? So Okay, but I, I just think that like if I'm if I had an ad I wanted to put somewhere or if I wanted to put ads on my site, then wouldn't I just go to Google? Like they seem to put advertising all over the place. So I guess they're not in a vertical. They're just very dispersed. Uh, Google is a category killer, right? I mean, given its size, it does a little bit of everything. Um, it, it Google, no one ever thinks of it, it, it again in that way. But in Internet advertising, Google is another network, right? There's. Google is one of the larger players, obviously, given its size, mm -hmm. but there, there's there's a whole host of networks and they specialize 
in a particular type of, of pricing model that, 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 that people uh, are attracted to. So Okay, and so depending on what I'm trying to sell, they may not even be a good choice. Yeah. So if it's health and beauty, then your network might be the very best. Yeah, so okay. um, not a vertical verse per se, but something that, they're, that they publicly stated that they want to do is Yahoo has said, um, the CEO said this at the uh, at the uh, at cons uh, earlier this summer. They said we want a lot of um, advertorials and uh, and native advertising. So those are the uh, that's the content you see, which uh, reads like an editorial, but is really an ad. So they basically said, like, look, we want to be a publisher that runs a lot of that 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 type of advertising, right? Okay. So, and is that uh, advertorials? Is that a growing area? So. For a lot of big publishers, so think about um, who are like, I guess the term is the, they're like aggregate sites. They they do a little bit of everything. So think of like Yahoo, think of AOL, which is actually still exists. You know, think oh. of MSN, you know, Microsoft's, uh, you know, they, there's a constant need for content. Yes. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, and the way the industry works these days is no one really hires writers anymore to be on staff, right? Everyone's a freelancer, right? Okay. Um, but the need for content is so great that advertorials have in, in native advertising have kind of taken up some of that demand. What's happened in that industry um, is the quality of the advertorial, the native advertising has really, really uh, improved. Um, for your viewers, if you want a great example of kind of the, the you know, advertising two point, version 2.0, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. um, you can Google, uh, I guess I'll give a free plug here to somebody else, you can Google Orange is the New Black New York Times, uh, the Orange HBO, sorry, I'm sorry, not HBO, uh, Netflix, uh, which uh, uh, broadcasts uh, Orange is the New Black, ran a um, large ad campaign in, uh, in the summer which was an advertorial. So they ran a, um, a series of articles about uh, uh, women in, in penitentiaries, right? And it was very informational based. And, um, you know, at, at, the, at the top of the, of the screen was an was a advertisement for Netflix and on the bottom was, a, was some type of plug for, for, for Netflix. But, you know, most of the article was content driven. Right. Okay, so it wasn't focused on the show per se, but it related it to related the show. It related to the show, right? Because... It, it, if any, if if you know a little bit about that show, it's about a woman who ends up in prison, right? So, so there's a there was a direct correlation between the content and and the show without overtly selling the show. See, I like that approach because I've seen other ones where I'm reading what I think is a true, honest article, and it's talking about how great some product is, and then at the bottom it says that it's been paid for yeah. by that company, and I wish that they had just put it at the top because then I wouldn't have read it because. I can't trust it anymore. But the example you're giving is is including valuable content that just happens to be related to a show. Yeah, I mean, what ha what's happening in the industry and, and, and the surveys are are showing this is that visitors, I guess what, what visitors have said is that we don't mind an advertorial or native advertising per se, as long as there's good content. Okay. Right, so um, I guess it's, it's a rough analogy is we don't necessarily mind if there's a lot of product placement in, in a movie as long as it's a good movie, right? Well, Whereas if it's a, a bad point. movie, we think about, wow, look at that company that obviously, you know, is the major sponsor of, of, of this particular movie because their logo splashed all over the place. You know, the movie stars using their product or service or whatnot, right? So I think it's the same mindset, right? Like if the content is really good, People don't particularly mind that it's it's sponsored content, right? If it's sponsored content, I think, and it's very poor quality content, it tends to enrage the visitor a lot more. Yes. Because it's, it's, it's pouring salt in the wound, so to speak, right? So. Oh, very interesting. I'm glad that there's been an evolution there because I always had these concerns about advertorials because you couldn't necessarily tell what it was and it, they just seemed to be biased, but I can see that that's not always the case. Yeah. No, and, and as I said, I think there's just... There's a natural evolution towards this. I mean, internet advertising has been around since the 90s, but I think there's a, a certain maturity that's happened in the last couple of years. The um, Internet Advertising Bureau of Canada has basically reported very recently that um, advertising spending on digital, so i.e. internet advertising, now 
exceeds uh, uh, advertising spending on television for the first time ever, right? So really? We, we have this inflection point now where uh, okay. where everyone's been talking for 10 years, you know, e-commerce is coming, you know, mm-hmm. internet advertising is coming, it's going to, you know, really affect traditional media. I think that day is finally coming, the numbers are, 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 are showing that, right? So... From a, from a quantitative perspective, as opposed to a lot of people just saying, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Now, are there different pricing models for websites? Yeah, so, um, and again, something people don't usually think about, but um, it depends on what you want to do. So an advertiser, again, which is a company that's trying to promote a, uh, a, a good or service, uh, usually goes to networks that specialize in different types of pricing models. So. The simplest one, and the one that kind of started when internet started first began, is just something called uh, cost per uh, thousand or CPM, right? The okay. M is uh, the Roman uh, numeral for thousand, and so yes. that's why it's called CPM. Uh, internet's full of jargon. Sometimes <laughs> the jargon doesn't quite make sense, right? So right. when internet I, 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 it, when internet advertising first began, right, and you had a company that went to think about what a website looked like and like. 1995 it was some static website usually a couple pages or whatnot the way that it was usually priced was on a cpm model so the so the advertiser or network would go to the publisher the owner of the website and say for every thousand visitors i'm just going to pay you x dollars that sounds a bit like traditional media so if i've got an ad in say a newspaper then for that i'm probably paying in a similar way am i not yes Okay. Yeah, like based on circulation numbers and whatnot, you're pricing it out that way, right? So the publisher probably says, I get 50,000 visitors a day on my hockey blog, for example. You know, why don't you just post something about a new hockey stick you're selling for? Example, right, right? Okay. So um, that's that type of pricing model advertisers don't tend to like because there's no call to action. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you're trying to promote some type of information or some new product, Perhaps it's appropriate. So, for example, you're launching some new product or service that's never been in the market before. So, let's take for example the a hybrid vehicle ten years ago, right? Okay. Everybody, no one knew what it was. We heard about it. This is some George Jetson thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? <laughs> Does it transform from a car to something? Yeah. Can I fly in the air with it? Right? Yeah. Like you know, uh, uh, do I have to change the light bulb? You know, like those types of things. Yeah. Um, it, you know, in those types of cases, um, an advertiser may have just said it may be more appropriate for us. To just to raise awareness so we're willing to go to auto to all the automotive sites and basically say we will we will pay you on a on a cpm model okay. so for every 1000 clicks we'll pay i'm just making up the numbers we'll yeah, pay yeah. you 50 bucks right okay. so um obviously from the advertiser's perspective they're just trying to raise where raise awareness from the publisher's perspective they kind of know how much money they're going to make assuming that their traffic is consistent. So, i.e. 50,000 visitors visit that website every single day on average, no matter what. Okay, right? now, so. is that model used very much? Um, from the advertiser's perspective, it's not very advantageous because, again, there's no call to action, right? It's okay. just, uh, it, you know, for people who are in the branding, who just want to brand something, probably it's still being used, but it's kind of the equivalent of a billboard, you know, that is by the side of the highway that doesn't tell you to do anything, right? Okay. So it's like, it's a rough analogy, but it's sometimes, some people view CPM as like a public service announcement, right? Like someone, you're driving by the side of the highway and it says, don't drink and drive, right? Like Mm -hmm. very valuable message, but it's not telling the visitor to do anything, right? Other than in that case, not to drink and drive, but it's not telling you to, to buy buy something from a from a business's perspective and it seems like a waste because the internet does provide analytics and to just have essentially a billboard doesn't seem like a very good use yeah so that's why there's been an evolution towards the other two pricing models the for the one that most people are familiar with is um is a cost per click so cpc or i guess sometimes it's known as a pay-per-click uh from uh depending on what you're doing with google so what that basically means is that the advertiser will pay the publisher every time someone sees the ad and clicks through. That sounds like Google AdWords. Yes, that's and Google AdWords is is is, is a large network that deals in, 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 in that okay. type of pricing model, right? So from the advertiser's perspective, there's a certain advantage because 
now not only is someone seeing the ad, but they're taking an action to, to go to the, the next, to get out of the publisher's website to go to a, a, a web page, right? Mm -hmm. and assuming the web page is designed properly, you're going to get the visitor to, to hopefully do something that you want them to do, right? Or right. a subset of your visitors to do something that you want to do. Right. And so I wasn't that familiar with the CPM model. It just doesn't seem like it's very internet based. I've heard of CPC or pay per click, whatever, uh, but I thought that's as much as there was. But you're saying there's another type also. Yes. Yeah. So um, cost per action or cost per acquisition is something that that we at Jumbleberry do. So that's something we specialize in. So cost per acquisition from the advertiser's perspective is a very low risk way of doing internet advertising. So what Cost per acquisition means is um, the visitor visits the site, looks at the ad, not only clicks through the ad, but has to complete some type of agreed upon action before the publisher gets paid. So usually okay. that action is I'm buying something, right? Or I'm the visitor has to provide an email address so that you can expand your, uh, your email distribution or the um, visitor has to download a white paper or download something, right? And that, in, that, in, in that event, when those actions occur, or those acquisitions occur, then the advertiser has to pay the publisher, the okay. website. Now that sounds like a much better model because I heard that with the cost per click, sometimes competitors would click on ads of their competitor just to waste their money. Yeah. So. Click fraud and and, and yeah, click fraud. And yeah. the media has talked about this. Click fraud is a big issue in 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 uh, in, in that in CPC um, is not as much in CPA because obviously you'd have to click through and buy, right? But how could or, there be how could there be any fraud with CPA? Uh, there's typically none, uh, okay. unless you know the action is we need email addresses, right? Oh, so then okay. you can just stuff a whole bunch of email addresses but jumbleberry doesn't the our actions are typically acquisitions like someone's buying something okay. other networks may work on you know we only want um you know the, the the advertiser only wants email addresses or wants people to download something so we get their email address in order to sell them something later on right but obviously when you're doing that your compensation is a lot lower because uh because uh, you're not making any money off of someone giving you an email address directly, right? So, right. so it sounds like the CPA model would be the most expensive, be but yes. then you're paying for something you actually want it to happen. Yes. Yeah, so it's the risk reward proposition from the advertiser side because your risk is so small and you have some type of guarantee, you have a guarantee in advertising spend, the compensation you have to pay to the publisher is higher than the other two pricing models as a result. Right, because you are def like in and in, for our advertisers, they are getting a sale, so there is cash yes. flow coming in. So there's a clear revenue recognition between the cash coming in and what you're paying all of the websites. Right. Okay, but what's the most popular form used? The most popular form used for most people is CPC because it's, it's very easy and it tends to from the advertiser side, they don't have to pay as much to the publishers. CPA is a very specialized pricing model, which typically requires products or services with high margins and typically requires an advertiser with more than a modest uh, uh, advertising spend online, right? It's, oh, okay. you can't run, I shouldn't say you can't, it's very difficult to run a CPA uh, campaign with, uh, with a very limited budget, right? See, the people who tend to seek out CPAs are not, um, your mom and pop hair salon, right? They tend to be uh, people who are uh, selling products with high profit margins, services with high profit margins, products or services which are recurring. So, for example, think of um, Steak of the Month Club or um, you know uh, uh, protein shakes where you have a monthly uh, um, a subscription and and you're allowed and you're getting your 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 new supply of, of protein every single month. So I didn't know they had that, but uh, they have a they have an everything of the month club these days, right? So yeah, I thought uh, the the shaving of the month club or whatever yeah. that is was a, a pretty good innovation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's um, CPA is very nichey. It's okay. it's it's, it's uh, uh, admittedly so. Uh, it's not for everybody. CPA, CPC, sorry, is something that everyone's typically seen. Right. Because if you own your own website, 
uh, whether you consciously think about it or unconsciously think about it, and you sign up to you know one of these Google AdSense uh, 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 accounts in order to make in order to monetize your website, you're 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 you're, you're in the CPC world, right? So, okay, and is CPA the newest form of advertising? Um, no, it's been around. It's just it's much nichier, so people okay. don't write about it. CPA, as I said, it's it's it's, it's very niche. CPC tends to be a little bit more Main Street, for lack of a better term. Um, they're not mutually exclusive concepts. There are publishers, there are websites with a lot of advertising space that will run both CPC and CPA okay. at the same time uh, in order to monetize their, their website as, 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 as greatly as possible. Okay. And is there anything else you'd like to add to our discussion? Um, no, I mean, if you have any questions, I, 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 it's a very niche field. There's a lot of jargon and to the extent that I, that I can educate your, uh, your, your viewers, I'm more than happy to. Okay. And what's the best way for them to reach you? Um, uh, my uh, email address is albert.luke, Luke is spelled L-U-K at jumbleberry.com. Jumbleberry is spelled J-U-M-B-L-E-B-E-R-R-Y. Okay. Thanks very much for dropping by. Albert. Oh, no problem. Thanks for the tea. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Tea at Taxevity. The Taxevity Insurance Advisory helps you understand insurance and bridges gaps in your coverage. There's no premium for peace of mind. How healthy is your insurance?